The story starts with a young man named Kinji Ninomiya. He looked down on the wage workers who worked hard every day for their money. Then we learn that he put all his money into Bitcoin. As a result, he became a Bitcoin millionaire, and he invested his money to build three skyscrapers. He became a top G and never planned to work again in his life. Suddenly a black hole appeared in his apartment, and he was teleported to another world. After that he looked around, and he was confused after seeing the monsters in front of him. A few months passed and Belza, the director of Rizaha Demonite Mining Corporation, made an announcement that they need to work even harder. We then learn that he was teleported to a magical world full of monsters and dungeons. But with modernization, the world changed dramatically. As a result, the ore found in dungeons was used as an energy sources. Then we see Ninomiya mining and his co-worker was losing his mind because Saruya has been working for three months without taking a day off. Suddenly the team leader of his group showed up and he was angry because Ninomiya could only reach 15% of his quota. Ninomiya hated being exploited in this world. He got tired of working 16 hours every day and started crying. Meanwhile, a guy named Wannabe was being yelled at by his supervisor. Ninomiya couldn't help him and he decided not to intervene in this conversation. Suddenly, he dropped a gold coin on the floor that he needed to buy food. The coin rolled into a small hole, and Ninomiya discovered an opportunity to change his life. In the night he was looking for Wannabe, and he invited him out for a drink. Wannabe told him that their team leader was mad because he wasn't at work this afternoon. Then Ninomiya told his story that he is 20 million in debt because his first business failed. He said he tried to make money through dropshipping, but it didn't work. As a result, he ended up in the mining company and worked like a slave. He planned to become a top G again, and explained Wannabe about his plan to get rich. The following morning he was almost scolded, but he asked if he could go on a prospecting tour. Ninomea's team leader was happy about this and wished him good luck. Then we learned that prospecting tour is a slang term that means a small group goes deeper into the dungeon. A short time later, Wannabe said that it was very dangerous down in the dungeon. Ninomea replied that he didn't have to worry, and he showed him a hidden portal. He said that this passage is safe, and that they can get to the third floor of the dungeon. After arriving in the third floor, there was demonite everywhere, which was worth twice as much as the demonite on the first floor. After that they started mining and Wannabe was grateful that Ninomiya gave him this great chance. Ninomiya replied that he got top G potential and he feels that they will make a lot of money as a team. A few hours later, they collected a large amount of expensive ore and they were planning to go back. Suddenly, a dangerous monster appeared who planned to eat them. They were attacked but Ninomiya and his friend managed to dodge it. Then they hid from the monster and Ninomiya thought he was going to die. He didn't want to die and he came up with a plan. After that, he pushed Wannabe and he said that he will be his bait. As a result, Wannabe was caught by the giant monster and he thought that Ninomiya ran away. Before Wannabe could be eaten, Ninomiya appeared. He learned that the monster's name was Rim. Then he made Rim an offer to protect them from other monsters and in exchange, he would get her delicious food. Rim found Ninomiya interesting, and Ninomiya used all his business skills to convince her. Rim accepted the deal, and she turned into a cute girl. Ninomiya was happy to have survived, and he sensed that this deal would change his life. A few weeks later he was praised by his team leader because his results were insane. Meanwhile, Ninomiya was angry because he lost more money on food for Rim, because she was eating more like Nico Avocado. Following this Ninomiya decided to make more money, and he went back into the dungeon. Wannabe noticed that all over this area were magic items. Suddenly Rim said that this area is the toilet for Rim and the other monsters. He was shocked by this and Rim told him that she is hungry. Wannabe decided to cut off his tail and Ninomiya learned that his tail will grow back. He started acting weird after that and Rim explained to him that he is hypnotized. Ninomiya learned that it was caused by the magic item and he used it to hypnotize his co-workers. Ninomiya thought he was Jeff Bezos and took advantage of the sleepwalker's staff to brainwash his co-workers. Then Wannabe said it is wrong to brainwash their co-workers. Ninomiya replied that he doesn't have to worry because he will erase their memories of the end of this day. As a result Ninomiya made a huge amount of money and his co-workers were enslaved. In the evening Ninomiya tried to enjoy a hot bath but Rim peed in the tub. In the meantime his co-workers were wondering why they are feeling so tired. In the following day Ninomiya was motivated to make a lot of money, and one of his co-workers didn't want to work anymore. As a result, Ninomiya used the magic item again to hypnotize his co-workers. Wannabe told him that her co-workers are at their limit. He didn't listen to his friend, and ordered Rim to increase the power. 
Suddenly the sleepwalker staff fell apart and his co-workers were no longer hypnotized. Ninomiya's co-workers came to their senses and they were very angry with him. He was beaten up by his co-workers and Rim was hungry. She tried to eat Ninomiya and his plan to get rich and become a top G failed. In the days that followed, Ninomiya went to work and was despised by his co-workers. Then he found a letter and he wondered why Wannabe thought that he will die. The reason for this was that they were transferred to Explorations Division Group 8. Later, Ninomiya was almost killed by a slime, and Wannabe tried to save him. Ninomiya hated working for this terrible company. Then we learn that the Raizaha Mining Company is divided into many different divisions. Exploration is the core of its corporate revenue. For this reason, there are also different groups that have specific tasks in the dungeon, such as killing monsters and expanding the mining areas. Ninomiya was transferred to Group 8, which was responsible for supporting those who fought on the front lines. They must clean up mob monsters, and they were viewed as dropouts. Ninomiya didn't plan on spending the rest of his life with cleaning mobs, and Wannabe was depressed. Then he tried to cheer up his friend and he said that he can't give up his dream of becoming rich. Suddenly Wannabe was attacked by a mimic, and he said that he can't breathe. Ninomiya looked for a potion that could save his friend. He didn't find something useful and decided to use their magic bag to attack the mimic. In the evening he was scolded by his superior, and Ninomiya learned that he had to pay off the magic bag with the items it contained. As a result, Ninomiya was broke again and had no money to buy food. He still needed to feed Rim and stole a garbage bag full of leftover food. Rim started to eat the leftovers, but she suddenly stopped because she smelled something delicious. She found marbled meat that Ninomiya bought for a cheap price. He tried to stop Rim from eating his precious marble meat, but she kicked him into the wall. Later, Ninomiya was back at work and was ordered to refill the treasure boxes. Afterwards, he entered the dungeon and he was completely exhausted. Suddenly he met a guy from Group 3 who was running towards the exit. He was relieved after seeing Ninomiya and planned to use him as food for some monsters. A few moments later, huge ants appeared behind them, and the two started running away. Ninomiya learned that they are dungeon ants, and Group 3 had failed to eliminate them. Following this, Ninomiya spotted a river and he jumped into it. He saved Shin and planned to use the phone. Ninomiya tried to call for help but his superiors thought he was lying. Nobody believed him that monsters were on their way to the surface because they usually never leave their territory. Then the dungeon ants were on their way to eat them. He didn't intend to die and tried to find a way out. At the last second, he got a brilliant idea and he looked at a blue box. A few moments later, we see that Ninomiya's plan worked. He mixed dungeon ant feet with a transformation potion. As a result, they were able to transform into dungeon ants and managed to survive. Unfortunately, the gate out of the dungeon was locked and there was no way out. Soon after, an ant collapsed from exhaustion, and Ninomiya realized that they could understand the dungeon ant's language. He got his next top G plan in mind and started talking to an exhausted ant. Following this, he manipulated the ant with his business skills. Ninomiya explained to him that he is exploited and that he should expect more from life. Ninomiya tried to turn the ant against his boss and asked if he is angry about never getting a day off even though he works hard every day. Ninomiya then convinced the ant to work for him and he was surprised at how easy it was. Everything went according to his plan and he convinced more and more ants to work for him. Shin and Muten Roshi wondered what Ninomiya was up to because after a short time he gathered a large group of dungeon ants. Suddenly Ninomiya began to turn the fellow worker ants against their queen. The ants worshipped him like a god and they became his puppets. Ninomiya was a true top G, and he managed to win many ants to his side. Meanwhile, the dungeon ant queen has been informed that their progress on Operation Surface Invasion is at 30%. Suddenly, the worker ants began to protest, and Ninomiya talked down to her. She was confused and wondered why a human was here with her ants. He replied that they are comrades fighting for their rights. He also said that she no longer has the right to be a queen. She became angry and increased her power level to crush Ninomiya. At the last moment, Rim appeared, hungry. Ninomiya was surprised to see Rim, and she planned to eat some ants. Ninomiya stopped her, and he protected the dungeon ants with a piece of meat. As a result, he was adored by all the ants, and the queen ant fell in love with him. The next morning, Wannabe apologized for causing him problems. Wannabe was surprised that he wasn't angry at all, and he noticed that he was in a good mood. The reason for this was that Ninomiya realized that their company needed a new leader. Then he told Wannabe that he started a new group called Black Company. Also he learned that Ninomiya acquired an army of strong monsters. 
A few weeks later, we see Shia, who was praised by Belza. Belza explained to her that a group of promising rookies are returning from their corporate training retreat. As a result, Shia was asked to put her great skill to use by their side in Detmold. Then we see Ninomiya, who was at the corporate training retreat, and they were being trained like soldiers. Sergeant Pig was very strict and he did not tolerate disobedience from his soldiers. Later they were in a dungeon, and a powerful Cerberos tried to eat them. Ninomiya was angry, because his plan to get rich with the help of his army of ants didn't work out. Meanwhile, Cerberos planned to eat Wannabe, but Sergeant Pig eliminated the monster. They survived the first day of boot camp, and Sergeant Pig looked down on them. The next morning they were lectured by Sergeant Pig, and he said that they were lacking basic stamina. For this reason, he ordered them to run to the top of a mountain. All the workers were hungry, but Sergeant Pig wasn't going to give them anything to eat until they got to the top of the mountain. A few moments later, Ninomiya collapsed, and he planned to eat confusion grass. Wannabe warned him in time, and he was annoyed because he was starving. Then they got to the top of the mountain, and they were completely out of breath. They were not allowed to rest, and Sergeant Pig started the mental training. Ninomiya briefly lost his concentration, and he was almost killed. So another painful day passed, and all the workers were happy to have survived. In the evening, a co-worker almost lost his mind because of this place. But Wannabe said he liked this place, and Ninomiya realized that something was wrong with his friend. The reason for this was that Sergeant Pig used a special disc to brainwash the workers. Then we see Rim, and she was bored with the food in the dungeon. In the morning that followed, Ninomiya's group was enslaved again. Then we see Ninomiya, and the brainwashing slowly started to take effect. Over the next few days, the workers were successfully hypnotized. Following this, we see Sergeant Pig, who also ordered black mages to cast a powerful brainwashing spell. A few weeks passed and Ninomiya was a puppet without his own will. He was praised by Sergeant Pig, and his co-workers were motivated to work until they die. Then we see Belza giving a speech, and she was enjoying the sight of her loyal, weak-willed employees. She was worshipped as a goddess, and the workers planned to work in this company forever. In the afternoon, the corporate training retreat was over, and Sergeant Pig sold them an overpriced Belza figurines. Later on, someone bumped into Ninomiya, and he came to his senses. After that wannabe showed up, who bought three of the Belza figures, but Ninomiya destroyed them. Additionally, he hit him in the face, and Wannabe also came to his senses. Following this, he said that his plan to eat confusion grass to prevent them from being brainwashed was a success. Wannabe was glad he didn't become a tool. Meanwhile, Ninomiya was about to take revenge, and he smiled evilly. After this, Sergeant Pig reported that a person had put confusion grass in the mage's food. As a result, they activated a self-destruct button, and the island exploded. The following day, Ninomiya and his best friend Wannabe were promoted to the Group 3 office. Then Shin appeared, and he ignored Ninomiya. After this, they were greeted by Shia, who have been assigned as their superior. Wannabe was surprised to meet Shia, the second coming of the hero. She was flattered to be called a hero, and accidentally knocked him out. After Wannabe was taken to the hospital, Shia planned to show Ninomiya the new facilities. He was shown the Exploration Group headquarters and learned about the Mart Company, where they can buy gear. Ninomiya learned that Shia loved this store, but he thought it was stupid to buy gear from this shop. The reason for this was that the gear was made from the demonite they dug up. Shia couldn't tolerate Ninomiya badmouthing her company, and Ninomiya learned that she was just as stupid as SpongeBob SquarePants. Suddenly, Ninomiya was carried by Shia, and he couldn't do anything about it. As a result, Ninomiya was taken to the third floor of the dungeon. A few moments later, a Hecatoncheri appeared, and he learned that it is a strong A-rank monster. At that moment the monster attacked them, but Shia easily stopped him. Dungeon Ant A appeared, and Ninomiya watched as Shia launched her attack. She split the monster in half, and Ninomiya was shocked by her enormous power. Shortly afterwards, she wondered what Ninomiya was doing. She discovered Dungeon Ant A, and wondered why Ninomiya doesn't kill the monster. Shia concluded that Ninomiya is actually a monster too, and he called Rim to save him. After this, Rim appeared and Shia decided to attack her. Rim was angry and she increased her power. She then hit Shia, and she broke her ribs with one punch. Following this, Shia was tied up and told that it is forbidden to work with monsters. A few moments later, Wannabe also showed up and he was confused. He asked what happened and Ninomiya explained the situation to him. Shia planned to report them and Wannabe didn't want to lose his job, but Ninomiya got a plan and he made Shia to an accomplice. As a result, she couldn't snitch anymore and Wannabe understood why he should bring a camera. Following this, Shia learned that she is now an employee of Ninomiya's company. A month later, 
Ninomiya was broke again because all his money went to feed Rim. Suddenly, loan collectors appeared and took Ninomiya to an alley. The leader ordered him to pay back his debts within a month, otherwise he would die. We then see Shia dreaming about his father who left her to fight against monsters. After that, Shia said that she never wants to be like him. Later, she was motivated to redouble their efforts and clear out the dungeon. She noticed that something was wrong with Ninomiya. The reason for this was that he didn't know how to pay back 5 million gold. Shortly afterwards, Shia planned to get them used to dungeon exploration. She explained to Ninomiya and Wannabe that they must always be careful and not let their guard down. Then she discovered monsters, and the two were supposed to gain experience fighting monsters. Ninomiya was almost killed, but Wannabe saved him. Next, Shia explained to him that they need to collect body parts that have a lot of mana. Suddenly, Ninomiya noticed that Wannabe's tail had grown back and he got an idea. A few days passed and Belza discussed with the department heads that they are having some problems in the dungeon. Then she remembered about reports that something strange was happening on the second floor. Shortly afterwards, we see Rim, who was watching over several monsters in the dungeon. We then learned that Ninomiya built a monster farm on the second floor. He took advantage of the knowledge that monsters have parts of their bodies that grow back. This allowed him to earn a lot of money without having to work hard. Suddenly an earthquake started and Ninomiya tried to save Shia. We then learned that Belza caused the earthquake to sacrifice Shia as food for a demon. She was sure that her plan will work because the demon was after people with strong magical power. Unfortunately, Shia wasn't dead and she told Ninomiya not to be so loud while she was fighting the monsters. Shortly after, she thanked Ninomiya for trying to save her. After that, Ninomiya asked her if there was a magic item that would teleport them to the exit. Shia said yes, but she would rather explore the dungeon. Suddenly a strong monster appeared, and Shia was attacked. She immediately launched a counterattack and was able to injure the enemy. At that moment she understood that she was being served as food for the demon. After Shia was hit by the demon again, Ninomiya was worried about her. They were in big trouble, and Shia said that they won't be able to survive. Following this he learned that the teleportation item can only transport one person to the surface. Shia wanted to sacrifice her life, but Ninomiya had no intention of abandoning her. He stopped her, and he threw the magic item at the demon. We then see Belza scolding Ninomiya's former team leader. Suddenly the demon appeared on the surface and they were confused. Meanwhile, Shia couldn't believe what Ninomiya had done, but he replied that they have a bigger problem because the demon is after Shia. Then we see the demon that was rampaging on the surface. Following this, Ninomiya prepared countermeasures to save Shia. The demon was on his way to the second floor of the dungeon, and the mine workers were scared. A few moments later, Ninomiya learned that Rim still hadn't been found. Meanwhile, Wannabe was happy that his best friend was unharmed. After that, Ninomiya's plan started, and he had set up a trap. He immediately ordered his ant friends to pour cement into the hole. Additionally, Shia cast a spell to dry the cement. Unfortunately, Ninomiya's trap didn't work, and he initiated the next plan. He told Shia to rest, and he planned to use her as bait. Following this, the demon was lured to the next trap, and Shia said that an ordinary trap doesn't work. Ninomiya ordered his ants to start their mission. At that moment, the demon fell into a large hole full of monster oil. Ninomiya then used fire to burn the demon. The demon became angry, and Ninomiya was blasted with laser beams. Shia was able to save him in time and she planned to sacrifice her life. But Ninomiya said that she should stop talking such nonsense. Suddenly Ninomiya told her that he knows about her father's story. Then Shia replied why she would sacrifice her life for the Raizaha company. Suddenly Ninomiya grabbed her breasts and he was punished for it. Afterwards, After this, he used his Riz skill and he said that she can't just throw her life away. Ninomiya knew what a woman wanted to hear and proved that he got infinite Riz. He told her that Shia should choose her own path and she finally understood why her father left her. A few moments later, Ninomiya initiated his third plan to harm the demon. He wanted to make the fight easier for Shia, and she was happy to have Ninomiya at her side. She then attacked the demon with a powerful sword strike and was able to knock out the monster. Ninomiya thought they won, but the demon wasn't dead yet. In the last second, Rim appeared, and she saved him in time. However, Rim said that Ninomiya is her food, and she began to launch her attack. Rim defeated the powerful demon with a single attack and Ninomiya was shocked by it. After the fight, he thanked Rim and promised to buy her delicious food. Suddenly Rim said that the demon is not complete, and Ninomiya didn't understand anything she said. A few moments later, Ninomiya activated a red glowing button and he fell into a black hole again.